Welcome back to a learning analytics tool course. Let us continue the performance metrics in machine learning classifiers. So, we saw that uh, kappa is used for, uh, for uh, performance to uh, pick which classifier is better if you have imbalanced data set and everything. Uh, there is a binary classification problem we saw that uh, out of 1000 students we want to predict how many students will get more than 90 marks in final exam. Consider uh, the table looks like this that is um, 980 students got uh, uh, less than 90 marks and predicted correctly by the classifier and the classifier predicted uh, also the other 20 students uh, who actually got more than 90 marks as a non, uh, uh, non performer of 90 marks or more than 90 marks. Consider this table, uh, what will be the kappa score and what will be the accuracy? The classifier did nothing, in the sense the classifier did not create any rule, uh, you might have given a 10 features, does not matter. The classifier created a zero rule uh, classification problem, that is there is no rule. It simply classified everything into one class or it can be one simple rule, please classify all the data into majority class, majority class is um, zero. So, the classifier did simple uh, classification. Uh, classifying everything into one majority class. So, in this problem, um, compute accuracy and kappa and infer why the values are uh, you get accuracy values say something and why kappa scores like that. After writing down your answer, uh, please assume to continue. So, binary classification problem, let us look at accuracy and kappa, accuracy is 98 percentage because 980 students out of uh, 1000, so 98 percentage, there is no doubt, it is accuracy in percentage and kappa is 0. So, let us see, can we have a negative kappa? So, think of a problem and create your own confusion uh, table uh, and uh, try to uh, compute negative, uh, get a negative kappa in it. If negative kappa, what is the meaning of it? If it is negative, which means the classifier is doing very poorly compared to even um, by chance. So, what is the meaning of kappa 0? It is uh, the classifier is simply performing very equal to the chance level. So, how to infer the kappa values? So, in the last uh, slide, we mentioned that uh, kappa equal to 0.4 means what? Whether 0.4 is good or bad? There is no uh, definite answer for that. I said that it depends on the domain. Uh, for example, uh, in education domain, uh, 0.2 to 0.4 is fair if you get a kappa score. About 0.4 is considered to be good. And uh, if you have multi class problems, say you have to classify the students into multi class, like I, um, the student will get a pass, student will get uh, uh, more than 50 marks to 60 marks, 60 to 70 marks. If you have multi class problems, then uh, kappa score of 0.4 is also considered to be good. The, the value is 0.4 here, it is not this. But for an integrated derivative problem like what we saw in the last class, uh, we should have a agreement between two later at least uh, 0.8 or greater than 0.8. If you have a agreement say around 0.6, it is not good to use that integrator uh, the two researchers for the observation in your research. So, make sure that you have integrated reliability greater than 0.8 and uh, if they are not achieving it, train again the researchers, train them again, discuss with the co-researchers and find out where the mistakes, why the mistakes have happened. Again do the uh, measuring the students uh, frustration or something like that. Then after measuring the students affective states, again compute the kappa and make sure that you get better than 0.8. Uh, if you are not having 0.8, uh, you may not able to publish your uh, your uh, research uh, in a good uh, reputed journals. So, let us move on to the other metric. Uh, in this class, we will see uh, two more metrics uh, to pick the better uh, ML classifier. Um, there is a one is uh, receiver operating characteristic curve. Uh, this particular ROC curve is come from uh, signals uh, or uh, uh, audio signals transmission uh, receiving uh, in electronics and communication. So, what is receiver operating characteristic curve? Uh, it actually a graphical uh, plot to identify the performance of binary classifier. So, it is a graph between uh, true positive rate and a true negative rate. 
So, given this table uh, true positive, false positive, remember this table two classes ago. So, true positive rate is uh, true positive divided by true positive plus false negative that is recall otherwise it is called sensitivity. True negative rate is true negative divided by true negative plus false positive it is called specificity. And uh, true negative rate is sometimes called as 1 minus false positive rate. False positive rate is false positive divided by false positive plus true negative. So, receiver operating curve is plotting uh, sensitivity versus 1 minus specificity. Okay. Let us consider this is the plot and uh, you have values uh, for 0 to 1 and 0 to 1 here. So, uh, let us see uh, if you have a classifier which gives a very good, um, a very good uh, specificity that is very good uh, specificity and uh, 1 minus 1 will be 0 the classifier will be here and uh, sensitivity that is recall rate is very low then this value will be here right. This is not a good score. Similarly, if you have a very good uh, recall, but very poor um, uh, uh, very poor specificity, what is specificity is poor matlab if it is 0, 1 minus 0 will be 1, it will be here. So, you having a classifier in either very good sensitivity or very good specificity is not good. Okay? Uh, it's like only one of them is very good and other one of them is not good if it is 0 it is not good. So, the values lie below this line which indicates the classifier is performing bad. Okay. The values which lies above this considers the classifier is performing good. For example, uh, if you have a, a perfect classifier uh, which has high recall and uh, uh, say high uh, specificity, then uh, 1 minus 1 will be 0 and uh, recall will be 1. So, the value will be this is the best classifier. Okay. This is the best these two are uh, just a random guess or uh, average do not even consider uh, pick the classifier in this line. Classifiers perform below this, this is the worst do not even consider picking the classifier. Uh, if you, something happens like this accuracy will see like a 0 do not worry. And uh, you will have the classifier lying in this particular line do not pick those classifiers. The classifier lying in this line here or here pick based on where the classifier is. So, this is better than all other two right or this is the best case scenario. Let us do a small activity uh, then we will come back to this our C curve in detail. So, let us start a uh, small activity to understand the RLC curve better. So, you have a values accuracy TPR and TNR, uh, you know that TNR is the specificity. So, you have to say 1 minus specificity, true negative rate and true positive rate. So, you have three classifiers and the performance is given to you. And uh, which classifier you should choose? Uh, use the RLC curve to plot and uh, pick a right classifier. After you pick the right classifier, you can resume the video to continue. Let us see which classifier is doing good. Um, you might have done it, I will just repeat it again. So, in accuracy, uh, we do not need accuracy for ROC at all, there is no point in keeping that here. So, the TPR true positive rate that is um, sens sensitivity is 0 0.7 for classifier 1 and TNR is 0 0.4 which means it will be 0 0.6. 1 minus TNR is 0 0.6. So, it will be like here. So, x will be 0 0.6 and this will be 0 0.4. This is classifier 1. Okay. Uh, it is a mistake. Uh, Let us erase this. Okay. So, this is classifier 1. And uh, TPR is 0 0.8 and uh, this is 0 0.9, TPR equal to 0.8, TNR is 0.9, it will be like here, right? So, here yeah, this is classifier 2. And the TPR is 0.3 and TNR is 0.5, so 3.5 will be this. If TNR is 0.5, uh, the value will be 0.5 minus 0.5, before another 1 minus 0.5 is 0.5 and 0.3. Let us get two negative values this, this is classifier 3. So, we can see that um, the best classifier is 
perfectly uh, the one which is here, the classified two. If you compute it like that, uh, it's good. So you understood what is ROC curve is. If not, please look at the slides and also check Wikipedia what is ROC curve means. It's simply the curve between sensitivity and uh, one minus specificity to measure which classifier is doing good, which assumes both uh, precision and recall, also true positive rate and true negative rate in order to pick the classifier. It's not the precision, uh, recall rate and uh, false positive rate. So we saw what is uh, ROC. The other important metric uh, in machine learning to pick the uh, right classifier with the right threshold is called uh, area under curve. Assume a binary classifier developed to classify whether a student will pass the exam or not. But the classifier response is not simple 0 or 1, instead it gives the probability value of being 1 or 0 that is 0.8 or 0.7 or 0.0 or 0.1 or 0.2. Uh, consider this is the table. Okay. Uh, this is the true value. Uh, there are like uh, 10 students, there are 3 students will pass the exam, 3 will not pass, again 1, 0, 1, 1. This is a predicted value. Instead of uh, predicted value being a 1 or 0, we saw that in a previous slides or previous classes. Here it will give that some crush predicted value probability, say 0 0.8, 0 0.4, 0 0.7, some values like this. So you can apply threshold on this particular uh, this particular column, then you can create your own uh, classes. You can classify these students into class 1 or 0. This is the testing data set, consider that. So if I apply threshold is equal to 1, what happens? Uh, none of them is equal to 1, so we will classify everything as a 0. If the, if the threshold equal to or, um, or greater than 1, you assume the value is equal to uh, class 6 1, else you assume the class equal to 0. If you apply this threshold and uh, you see this 0 0.8 is uh, not equal to a greater than 1 which means all of them are classified as a 0. If you apply the threshold is 0 0.8, uh, this 0 0.8, uh, so this classifier will be classes as 1 this everything else as 0 and this will be classified as 1, everything else as 0. There are 2 uh, positive classes and 8 uh, negative classes here, 2 will pass, 2 will not pass. If you apply the threshold is 0 0.6, uh, this classifies this good and this is good and this is pass and this is pass, everything else will be classified as a net, not pass. Similarly for point uh, threshold equal to 0 0.4, 0 0.2 and threshold equal to 1. If threshold equal to 1, uh, sorry, threshold equal to 0, everyone will be uh, considered to be passed. So let us see you have an option to choose which threshold to uh, select which classifier uh, for your classifier. Let us assume you have an option to choose threshold for your classifier based on the performance. So in this, uh, in this slide, we are uh, thinking about the classifiers which gives a probability value instead of the uh, either 1 or 0 output. That will be the most of the most uh, cases we will be dealing with in our classifiers. So let us assume uh, only the threshold equal to 1 and uh, let us compute the uh, precision and recall. So as I um, uh, discussed in the previous slide, uh, we have uh, 10 students and their value if I assume 10 uh, threshold equal to 1, we will uh, classify all the students will be not pass. So the value will be 6 uh, and 10. For example, like uh, we assumed everybody is not passed, but 6 students are actually uh, 1 and 4 are uh, 0 and classified correctly. So the true positive rate uh, will be um, uh, true positive rate is uh, 0 divided by 6 is uh, 0. So true negative rate is uh, the true negative divided by 4 by 4 plus 0 is 4 and that is called specificity and the false positive rate 1 minus specificity that is what you want to plot it in the graph. So uh, let us do a small activity. I want you to uh, stop the video and uh, really go and compute um, false positive rate and true positive rate for all the threshold values use the table given in a previous slide, um, go and compute uh, threshold uh, for each and every threshold, false, positive, true, positive. 
please compute so that if you have any mistakes which can be corrected and uh, if uh, I made any mistakes you can inform me in the forums. After writing down all the false postulate and true postulate please resume to continue. So, here is the true postulate um, sorry false postulate and uh, true postulates for all the threshold values and uh, we also plotted them in the curve uh, in the AUC curve. So, in area under characteristic curve uh, that is simple uh, is similar to ROC right it is uh, it is not just this it is ROC. So, this is operator characteristic curve uh, we are going to compute AUC in the ROC it is not AUC ok. So, in ROC curve we have plotted um, FPR versus TPR FPR is 1 minus specificity. So, for a threshold equal to 1 uh, the value is 1 0 comma 0. So, threshold equal to 1 year. For threshold equal to 0.8 the false postulate is 0, but true postulate is uh, 0 0.33. So, here the threshold equal to 0.8. For threshold equal to 0 0.6 um, uh, false postulate is 0 0.25 and uh, 0 0.66. So, threshold equal to 0.6 it will be threshold equal to 0 0.4, 0.2 and equal to 0. Um, by uh, you now know that uh, if the value lies in this line that is this line it is kind of uh, not good random goes something like that and anything above is good. So, this classifier is doing good. Let us draw the curve. The curve is not exactly the, uh, the curve instead it is a step curve. the area under curve is you have to compute the area under all of this that is all this area should be computed. So, I am not going to compute the areas here, uh, but you have to compute all the areas uh, if you want to compute ROC and uh, AUC. So, this is a one classifier and uh, based on the different threshold we can pick which threshold is good. There might be another classifier say um, Another classifier which might have add a different, different values that might give a different uh, area under curve. So, based on the area under curve we can pick the better classifier. More importantly it is not about picking the better classifier it is important to pick which threshold value you need for your classifier. So, in this video we saw what is receiver operating characteristic, characteristic curve and also how to compute area under curve and uh, to pick uh, right classifier also to pick the right threshold. So, is there any other metrics in machine learning um, to pick the right classifier? Yes, there are lot of other metrics uh, like A prime. Um, so, but we will stop here. Uh, we know uh, this 3, 4 metrics is enough for us to pick the right classifier for the binary classification problems. So, do you need to compute ROC, AOC manually every time? I said no, it is simply used the um, um, tools or the libraries available in each script language uh, to compute it. So, the idea here is that you have to understand uh, what is ROC and what is area under curve how it is computed. So, that when someone show you the ROC curve or uh, area under curve you should know ok this means this I should pick the right uh, classifier the receiver operating curve shows me there is more area it, uh, it, it covered. So, I might pick this one. So, the, the best classifier always uh, will look like the completes the area under curve will be 1 like it completes all the area, but it is uh, highly unlikely that we see that kind of um, classifiers. Thank you.